Here we go again. What do you do when your party can't seem to budge in the opinion polls while your biggest political rivals maintain a healthy lead? Well, you attack them, of course. That logic has been used time and time again by Leo Varadkar, as I've covered on this channel before, and now it seems that Aunt Taoiseach has been a bad influence on the very decent man Michal Martin, as Michal himself has descended into the realms of mudslinging against Sinn Féin. And not just mudslinging, but blatant gaslighting too. Leo Varadkar's signature moves being borrowed by Aunt Hanisha. Sharing is caring, after all. Really, it's all just more proof that Fine Gael and Fianna Fáil may as well be one and the same party, and the sooner they drop the pretense that they are somehow different, the better. So what did Michal attack Sinn Féin on this time? Well, firstly, although he was adamant that Fianna Fáil and Sinn Féin are hugely incompatible on a policy footing, he didn't truly rule out a coalition with them, which really just betrays the desire of Fianna Fáil to remain on the gravy train and in power at all costs. He attacked their policies on the usual things like business, the EU, climate issues, you know, issues that are broad and that Sinn Féin haven't actually been tested on for the claims to be true. But all of that is standard political fare, isn't it? I mean, he's hardly going to admit they're failing on anything, is he? No, that would be too honest for decent man Michal, but it's par for the course in politics. So no, that's not what I want to talk about today. I'll start with the absolutely hilarious gaslighting claim by Martin that the media were playing cheerleader for Sinn Féin and their chances in the next election. It's so comically ridiculous that you have to wonder how he managed saying it with a straight face. The media, the Irish media, cheerleading Sinn Féin. Has he read a paper lately? This is surely satire, right? The main media outlets in Ireland never question the coalition on, well, anything. They just take what they say and publish it without even a second's worth of critical thinking, and yet they are cheerleading Sinn Féin. Why? Because they are reporting the facts of the opinion polls? Is repeating the results of an opinion poll cheerleading now? Is that the bar? Now, he went on to explain that he feels the voter base is very fragmented, so anything can happen and to anoint Sinn Féin as the government in waiting is premature. Now, that actually makes sense. A lot can happen between now and election day and nothing is ever certain. But to actually accuse the media of cheering Sinn Féin on is just bizarre, easily shown up as nonsense and quite frankly gaslighting bullshit. As I said, the media never questioned members of the government. They merely nod and print what was said, unquestioningly, unflinchingly. You only have to look at the cursory glance that the mainstream media have given to Sippo investing dodgy declarations of donations to Leo Varadkar to see what I mean. When his spokesperson told the media that Leo was not in fact under investigation by Sippo, that was all that was needed to print and then sweep the story under the rug. Real journalists who care about truth would have questioned this statement as it was being given, or caveated the quote with the evidence that says otherwise. But no, that doesn't happen here. I feel confident in asserting that the only parties the media here cheerlead and cheer on are those on government benches. And if what we see now is the media cheerleading Sinn Féin, then I'd hate to see what it would look like if they were openly hostile to them. But the biggest attack from Michal Martin came when discussing the history of Ireland. He asserts that Sinn Féin are romanticising the troubles and rewriting history, and that this revisionism is, quote, infecting a new generation of young people. Now, considering his coalition colleagues in Fine Gael continually try to claim Michael Collins as one of their founders, despite the fact that Collins died a decade or so before Fine Gael were formed, it's an interesting display of cognitive dissonance from Martin. But these assertions are nothing new coming from Fianna Fáil or Fine Gael. Par for the course, really. The difference this time was the wording used, that Sinn Féin are infecting the youth of today. I personally can't see any evidence of that, but maybe I've missed something. Infecting, though. It's quite a sinister turn of phrase, and one could easily see a backlash from said youth who may not take too kindly to such patronising comments. Comments that cast aspersions on their ability to think for themselves, and their critical thinking abilities. 
coupled with the fact that the youth of our country are being quite visibly cast aside by the current government and left to flounder in an unforgiving housing and rental market that is stacked against them, all the while Sinn Féin being the only big party looking to change that, and well, it's a fairly disparaging choice of words. The youth of today, and I would argue that that includes anyone under 40 at this stage, are already leaning to Sinn Féin as the established parties have shown time and time and time again that they are either incompetent and are unable to fix the issues plaguing the youth of today, or they just don't care to fix the issues as everything is actually working as intended to keep the rich rich and the poor poor. I feel it's a mixture of both, to be honest. The timing of this attack is also interesting. It comes in the wake of the quite frankly over-the-top pearl-clutching from certain quarters about the wolf tones drawing a massive crowd at Electric Picnic, and said crowd of mostly the youth of this country singing along enthusiastically to Celtic Symphony, that being the ooh ah up the ra song. We've seen this pearl clutching before, after the Irish women's football team secured a first ever qualification for a World Cup by beating Scotland in Scotland and gleefully singing Taylor Swift and, of course, Celtic Symphony, a tune synonymous with Celtic Football Club. Again, this was in Scotland. The women's team were dragged over the coals for it, made to apologise and subjected to offers of re-education from the enlightened few. All this over a song, sung in a dressing room after a famous victory. The team were on their way to paradise after all. Interestingly enough, we did not see the same pearl clutching when the Leinster rugby team sang the same song on the plane home from their Pro 14 final win over Glasgow Warriors in 2019, nor did we see it when the song was played over the Tannoy in the RDS after a Leinster win over Connacht in the URC earlier this year. An apology was enough. Double standards? Absolutely. Women's football is more working class, so therefore bold and needing re-education. Rugby is not working class, so therefore all good. They apologise, sure. Obviously I'm generalising here and the two sports are not exclusively upper, middle or working class, but I'm sure you can see what I mean. The problem here is that rebel songs like Celtic Symphony are also synonymous with Sinn Féin, the Irish Republican Party. And to hear that so many flocked to hear the wolf tones live at Electric Picnic and sang along to these rebel songs, well, the establishment can't be happy, can they? They can pretend their outrage is in deference to the victims of the Troubles, while conveniently ignoring that rebel songs span our entire history, but I have a slightly different outlook on it. In my view, they are annoyed because the songs are inextricably linked to the perennial rebels of Sinn Féin, and Sinn Féin are coming for their seat in the next election. They are annoyed because the rebel song that has been vilified in the aftermath of the triumph and subsequent coal raking of the Irish women's football team has now been given the spark to become a song of rebellion against the government forces who have cast aside all but the rich and wealthy of this country. Has the song, to use Michal Martin's own words, infected the minds of the disillusioned here? Well, the more the media and the government criticise the wolf tones and those who sing along, the more it will be sung. Barbara Streisand says hello. And that is why Michal Martin went on the offensive, in my view. Sinn Féin have been quiet enough as of late, to the point that I was starting to wonder why. We now know that Mary Lou Macdonald was recovering and recuperating after undergoing a serious surgery, so that somewhat explains their conspicuous absence. But it was still unusual. But that absence made Martin's attack feel somewhat unprovoked, but not if you take into account the wolf tones and ooh ah up the ra. In my view, Michal Martin's comments have betrayed his true feelings of fear that Fianna Fáil have lost the youth vote, but instead of trying to get them back on side, he has gone for the easier option of have a go at them and try to reprimand them. Not a good look in my opinion, and the infection against Fianna Fáil and their coalition colleagues may well reach a fever pitch just in time for the elections. So what did you think of Michal Martin's comments? Are the media cheerleading Sinn Féin? Have Sinn Féin infected the youth with their view of history? Or is Michal Martin simply terrified of the prospect that even after rejigging election lines and constituency sizes, that Fianna Fáil are looking at a bruising general election where big hitters may fall? What do you think of the criticisms of both the wolf tones and those in the crowd at Electric Picnic? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit that bell icon to be notified of new content. 
If you want to support the channel, you can now buy me a coffee, which you'd greatly appreciate it, and a huge thank you to those of you that already have. You can also follow me on Twitter for my real-time reactions. Until next time, Slonga Fole.